In today's Building the Shot video, I'm going to show you guys every single shot that I took at a photo shoot. This is something I don't think I've done before in a Building the Shot video. I might have showed you guys a third or half of the photos that I've taken throughout the entire shoot. So in this video, I want to show you guys every single shot that I took at a photo shoot. I want to give a huge shout out to Roland Sanchez for inviting me to this photo shoot because without him inviting me to the shoot, I wouldn't have been able to take any of the shots or make this video. And plus, it was the last photo shoot that I was able to do before all this COVID-19 stuff. So huge thanks to Roland. He is on Sanchez underscore Roland on Instagram. And also a huge shout out to the model Angela for modeling. Her name on Instagram is Angela.stx. You guys can follow them both on Instagram. Just like my other Building the Shot videos, I do have one final image that I'm gonna pull on the screen right now. That image right there. It's the image that I really liked and enjoyed the most from this whole photo shoot. So I am gonna go ahead and be more in depth and break down how that shot was edited as well and how I came to that shot later on in the video. Before I continue, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for curious and creative people alike. These classes allow you to explore new skills, deepen those existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life, and these lessons can help you stay inspired, express yourself, and introduce you to a community of millions. This is probably obvious, but I recommend some of the off-camera flash tutorials on Skillshare because I've yet to make a step-by-step -step tutorial, and in the meantime, you can check out the ones that are on Skillshare. One class that I was personally looking into is something definitely not in my element, it was called Outdoor Photography, Shooting at Sunset, Sunrise, and Night. It was by Chris Burkard, and I primarily wanted to see this class because it's, again, it's something that's not in my comfort zone. And it was pretty interesting because some of the editing techniques that he was using to edit his images are some of the techniques that I use for my off-camera flash photos. So it was interesting to see how he used those same techniques in different ways. Skillshare was designed specifically to learn, so there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. When it comes to the price, Skillshare is not expensive at all. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And actually the first thousand people to use my link in the description area below will get a free two month premium trial membership so you can explore your creativity. When you guys support the people that support me, it allows me to keep making videos for free here on YouTube. So I highly recommend checking out Skillshare. Again, the first thousand people to use my link in the description area below will get two months for free of premium membership. Before I show you guys all the photos from this photo shoot, I do want to break down the gear real quickly. I used the Sony a7R 3 even though I have the a7R 4 because I was using the clip-on filter, the ND filter for the a7R 3 I have used that clip-on filter for the a7R 4 but from using it twice on that camera, I can tell that the it wasn't designed for it and it was really stuck onto that sensor and it felt like it was gonna break when I tried to take it off. So I want to play it safe and wait for that company, STC Optics, to create a filter for the a7R 4 and not just adapt the a7R 3s filter onto that. The lens that I used specifically was the Sigma Art 105 1.4. I was really wanting to dedicate this photo shoot to just using that lens because I really like the compression on it and I was using it primarily at f1.4. But for a split second, I did use Roland's Sigma Art 35 1.4. The lighting I used was the Godox 8400 Pro. It's my favorite strobe right now and I used the 34 inch beauty dish to modify it. I like that combo because it's nice and portable, allows you to move faster rather than having a heavier setup. And it also, the modifier compared with that light allows you to have nice soft light, but, but still being a little bit punchy. Uh, it's like a na natural dodge and burn uh, in camera. So I really like it for that effect. Uh, and that's the lighting. Again, just a reminder, the reason why I use the ND filter instead of using high speed sync is because high speed sync does cut down power and depending on the light that you use, it could be as much as one stop. So although I use the 400 Pro um, with high speed sync, it could act possibly like a 200 watt strobe instead of 400 watts. Or another strobe might be acting like a 300 watt strobe instead of 600 watts. So I try to avoid using high speed sync sometimes so that I can get every single ounce of power from my light into the photo. Okay, so here's the very first image. This is not something that I would share. It was just something that I was curious about because like I said before, I was using the six stop ND filter on my camera. So I was curious to how I would need to adjust the settings to be in order to shoot in that shaded area. Obviously when you're not gonna use the ND filter, you won't need something like ISO 400 at 1 160th of a second. And you could probably be at ISO 50 at 1 1000th of a second. It's only because my sensor was making the image darker that I needed to go ahead and reduce the settings to make the ambient more brighter. This shot right here is the first shot that I took in an area where I wasn't actually intending to use 
uh, take some photos and use the off-camera flash. I initially liked this spot because I liked the colors of the, the leaves that were around her and how the sun was hitting it, hitting those leaves and making them show up and show the colors. So I really liked the vibe that we're going for, which was like very spring. And one thing I did do was take a shot without the lighting on so you guys can see how it looks like. But as I show you guys these images, I want you guys to focus on the how the light is on her skin. This shot right here, I do like. I do think the catch lights are nice and the positioning of the light is great. But in the next shot, I want you guys to focus on how it's impacting her skin and on the highlights on her skin. This shot right here, I do enjoy, but I do want that extra punch and nice uh, contrast in the skin. So I got the light closer and that ended up being how I ended up getting that effect. I just brought the light closer from here to here, maybe a foot and a half and it gave me that nice punchiness in the skin. After I took this shot, I was just going ahead and just taking a couple more shots in that area and kind of just varying up the intimacy of the shot, the closer composition. Over here is further away. Well, this shot right here is closer and I did take another shot like that. And then after that shot, I ended up really liking it. So I took a behind the scenes, which is usually what I do. Once I take a shot I really like, I take a behind the scenes. And that ended up being this shot right here. As you guys can see, I did stick in this area after I took those last couple shots but there's a good reason for it. If you guys pay attention to her hands and the first couple of images that I took, they're facing towards the camera and I wasn't really liking how they look like like that. So I went ahead and asked her to stick to the same spot, but just move her hands differently and ended up with these different shots right here. I did take a full body shot, but what you guys can see is that the modifier is in the top right corner of the frame. And the reason why I go ahead and just leave it in the frame is because the reason why it's in there to begin with is because it's close to the to the subject. It's close to Angela. By allowing the light to be that close, you get that nice punchiness of the skin that I mentioned earlier. But of course, it shows up in the shot. So sometimes I just leave it in the shot. I stick exactly to where I'm at. I don't try to move at all. And then I ask whoever's with me, like Roland was there, to just move the light out of the frame. And then I go ahead and just take a shot with it so I can just merge that top right corner into those other shots with it showing up, the modifier showing up. Just to give you guys a little context, in this spot right here, it wasn't actually where I wanted her to be, but sometimes at group shoots, if I'm shooting, the next person will decide the next spot and then vice versa. So Roland actually decided to have her in this spot and I didn't want her there, but he got a phone call, he was busy. So I just decided to take a couple shots there and see what I can take. I was liking the rim light from the sun that's on her arm and the shoulder there and on top of the hair, but I wasn't really liking my lighting. I, I should have lowered the light a little bit so that the catch lights were showing up better and the light was filling her eye sockets. But this these are the shots I took and I did like these shots. But uh, I do want to point out the background. I did intend to shoot lower so that the greenery was showing up more. But this last shot here, there's more of the concrete behind her, the walls. So there's more brownish tones. And I actually do like that as well. So I like both of these for that effect. If at any point you guys see an image that you think I should edit and post on Instagram, let me know. I was very undecisive about which shot to edit, but I ultimately ended up on that shot that I'm going to be talking about later on today with the pink dress and the flowers. So yeah, let me know. These next series of images are a spot that I actually intended to shoot in. I saw some nice leaves in, um, in next to the spot that we were actually in. So I wanted to use those as a little bit of um, greenery around her just to spice up a little bit of brownness in the background. So I got the light closer to her. You can actually see the lights in the top right corner of the screen, um, the modifier. I got the light close to her for that nice punchiness that I keep describing throughout this video. And I ended up with these next series of images here. From this image to the next one, you can see that her head is tilted up a little bit higher. I asked her to do this because when her head was tilted lower, again, you're getting a little more too much shadow in her face. So I asked her to raise it a little bit and ended up with that image. And then I took a couple more images. Those last images were a little bit too close. So I went ahead and just got a little bit further away and ended up with these next shots right here. Sometimes I try to be a little bit creative and I did that in this shot by trying to get the leaf in front of her eye, but then I didn't really like that. So, so I just had her move a little bit to the side and just took some normal shots without the grass in her or the greenery in her face. I ended up liking this shot. So of course what I did next was take it behind the scenes. This shot right here I took so you guys can see exactly how it looks like without any off camera flash. So this was the second outfit and I did intend to shoot with her sitting down on that rock there. She was just talking to me. So I just tested the light while she was talking to me and I decided I don't want her sitting there. So I asked her to stand up and that's why I took this next shot right here. I was just kind of varying up the composition shooting in landscape instead of portrait now. One thing I wasn't really liking with these next shots here 
is how the the palm tree behind her I didn't like how it was just sticking out of her he her head so I did take a couple of shots in this position but I wasn't ultimately liking the palm trees before I noticed the palm trees weren't really I wasn't really liking them I asked her to kind of fix the pose up so this is how it started with like that it wasn't like that at all so I asked her to kind of just move it up to the sides and then I took these next series of images right here. Not sure if I mentioned it, so I'm gonna mention it just in case, but the first shot that I took with the second outfit, this one right here, all the way up to this shot that you're seeing on the screen is with the Sigma Art 35 1.4. But after I took this shot, I decided to go back to 105 and I ended up taking these ones. This is with the light off, so you guys can see how it looks like with the light off. And I took these series of images. I actually do like how the shadows are forming in the eye sockets. You know, usually I would ask her to be a little bit you know, tilted so you, they filled in more, but I liked how they were just barely showing up right here. What you can see in this shot is that there's only a catch light in one eye. Sometimes I'll go ahead and use Photoshop and copy that catch light and add it to the other eye. And that's just something I wanted to mention because it's something that I actually do. Here are some of the other images I took here. And again, after I take a shot I really like, which is this one right here. But I actually like this one more now that I'm seeing it. But after I take a shot that I like, I do go ahead and take it behind the scenes. And that's exactly what I did right there. Here is the third outfit and I want you guys to pay attention that, to the different colors in the outfit and the flowers. The outfit was a little bit too bright and neon so I knew ahead of time that I was going to alter either the flowers or the dress. In this specific shot the exposure is a little bit too bright it's a stop too bright and the lighting is not really good as well so after I took this shot, I moved the light from camera right to camera left where her face is facing. That's usually what I aim for. If the subject is facing this way, then I'll have the light in that same direction. In this shot here, I wasn't doing that. So after I took the shot, I reduced the exposure and moved the lighting position and ended up with that shot right there. I really liked this shot. So I went ahead and just continued to take a couple more shots, thinking of different ways to uh, kind of alter the shot by like maybe the wind blowing her dress, which is actually what I was aiming for. Yeah and then maybe changing the composition slightly. So I think I was actually actively waiting for the wind to blow her dress. And then after I, I waited a little bit, she's just mentioned that she could just throw the dress. So I was like, go ahead and do that. And then I ended up taking these shots here. That's why her position changed from being a little bit more towards the light to a little bit more facing me. And she did, she did throw the dress a couple times and ended up with those two different shots. After I took this shot, which I really enjoyed, which is the one I made this video about, I went ahead and just go a little bit closer and take a couple more closer shots. And I actually really love these shots as well. I want to mention that I did, did bring the light a little bit closer when I went ahead and got closer myself and took these shots because if I take a shot closer, then I can get the light closer and get a little bit more softer light. So I think I, I did do that for this shot, for these next couple of shots. And after I take a couple of images and like, of course, I'll take a behind the scenes. So now she's in her third outfit. And I want to mention again that I did use a six stop ND filter, which was making my image really dark because the clouds were covering the sun at this point. I needed to bring up the ambient somehow. So I used a slow shutter speed and a low ISO, even though I should have raised the ISO and used a faster shutter speed. This shot right here is complete garbage. But I want to show you guys some of the other images. This is without lighting, with lighting. And then with a little bit brighter exposure, I used ISO 100 at 1 1 40th. And I took these two shots right here. After I took this headshot kind of uh, shot here, I decided to stick with the portrait orientation until I got a shot I liked. So I decided to take these next couple shots. And after I take a shot that I like, what do I do? I take a behind the scenes. So that's this shot right here. Again, I would recommend using a higher ISO and a faster shutter. So I should have been at something like 200th of a second at ISO 320 or something. With these next couple of photos, I did want to aim for like a really nice um, dynamic headshot. So I had the light really close and a reflector underneath. You can actually see the reflector in the next couple of shots right here. So I took these two shots and you can see the reflector on the bottom left there. And then I got a little bit closer and just a little bit closer. I like this shot. So I took a behind the scenes and that's this shot right here. You can actually see rolled in right there. What you're seeing now is the final outfit. And we actually did intend to shoot with this outfit during this specific time, during golden hour when the light was really golden. So we did shoot with that outfit last on purpose. I really knew that I wanted to use the leading lines of that balcony, whatever you want to call it, to kind of just um, lead into the image. So I, I stuck with this composition and I stuck at a low angle so that I can get more of the sky behind her. So I took this shot. The light is obviously not good here. It's a little bit too far away and low power. So I brought it up closer, or actually I increased the power first, which ended up in this shot. 
But then I went ahead and just decided, you know what, I can get the light closer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for a nice softness of the light, which is exactly what I did here. But of course, when you bring the light closer with keeping the same output, it's gonna make the light brighter. That's what you're seeing right now, that overexposure from keeping the light at the same power output as it was before when it was further. And after I took this shot, of course I reduced the output, but it was a little bit too much. So I, I increased the output a little bit more and it ended up with this punchiness in the skin, which is what I really liked. Obviously she's just messing with her hair, but I wanted to take a test shot to test to see if the light was good and it was. So I continued to take some photos um, with her actually post. So after I got the light right, I continued to take a couple more shots, but I want you guys to focus on not the lighting so much, but more so the blur of the background, like her hair and the dress. I shot this photo at these next couple photos at 1 1 60th ISO 100 at f1.4. I regret not shooting at a higher ISO and using a faster shutter speed so I can freeze some of the action of her hair in the dress more. So although I really like this shot the most, this is my favorite, the blur of the hair, the motion blur, I wasn't really liking that. So I, if I edit this shot, I probably will just sample this hair here and add it to the image um, instead of using this blurred uh, hair. This shot was taken without the light on so you guys can see exactly how the natural light looked like and exactly what the lighting did. And this is the behind the scenes of that last shot. So those last couple of shots. These next series of images, she was still in the exact same spot, but I decided to get closer since I had already taken those full body shots. Might as well take some, you know, more variety of closer shots to work with. I actually told her to bend her leg, I believe, a little bit higher. She actually raised her foot, I believe, so that you can see the, the, the bottom of the leg showing up in the frame. The nice little angle kind of helped improve the shot. So I took these shots. This is obviously without the light on. And here are the next couple of images with the light on. This shot right here, I'm not exactly sure what was going through my head. I'll be honest with you guys, because the lighting is not where it should be. It should be a little bit higher. So I think I do raise it up eventually, or maybe I just like the composition and I felt like I could just raise the exposure in post. I don't know what, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't know, I'm not sure exactly what's going on. After I took these shots and I was happy with them, Roland took a couple of shots and he actually chose a different background. So towards the left of this specific shot that you're seeing right now is this, the sun. So Roland shot with a background that was closer towards the sun and it ended up being more golden background. So I really liked that idea. So shout out to Roland for the idea. And I took a couple more shots. Her exposure is a little bit too bright. So I reduced the exposure, ended up with these next couple of shots. The exposure is a little bit too bright in the top left there. So I'd probably sample some of the other exposure and just paste over it. But I actually really, really do like this shot and this shot here and just now realized that I didn't take a body scenes for the shot, so my bad, but it's very close to the other shot that I showed you already, this one right here. I just turned a little bit to the side and moved the light a little bit, so we just pivoted. But yeah, that was every single shot. I do wanna go ahead and show you guys the adjustments that I made to the image that you know I wanted to make this video about, which is this one right here. I brought up the exposure, increased the shadows, decreased the whites, brought up the vibrance, and I also did a little bit of sharpening I increased the blue primary saturation slider to 80, but this made the oranges and blues a little bit too bright. So I decreased the saturation of the oranges. The adjustment brush is something I always do uh, use to adjust my photo. And I used it quite a bit for this image. So I adjusted the eyes. I adjusted the highlights in the sky. I adjusted the exposure of the flowers here, showing up too bright because of the light was close to that. I adjusted the exposure of everything but the sky, I believe right here, just a tad bit brighter. And then I even brought it up a little bit more in this area right there. Those were all the adjustments I made to this photo in Lightroom. And now I'm gonna show you guys how I adjusted this photo in Photoshop. So now that we're here in Photoshop, I'm gonna show you every single layer that led up to that final edited image. Um, the first thing I always do is try to remove the modifier if it's in the shot. So I warped the image a little bit and then removing it using the clone step tool. And with this layer here, I actually removed the leg that was showing up, the leg of the stand, and then a little bit of the distractions, the markings on the wood behind her, and just a little bit of these leaves here on top. After that, all those distractions were removed, I went ahead and did dodge and burn, which is my favorite thing ever. And I ended up with all of this stuff being dodged and all of this stuff being burned right here. And ended up with the before and the after. I did frequency separation because I felt like the leg and the arms could be a little bit more dreamy looking, more smooth. So I did intend for it to look 
too smooth, um, which is usually what I avoid. That ended up being this shot right there. I did alter the colors, like I mentioned before, the dress and the flowers were not really in sync. So I, I used stuff like the selective color tool and I don't know what else. Yeah, more selective color and even more selective color and some vibrance to kind of alter the colors to my liking. So that ended up being before and the after. And I also did a little bit of color balance to color tone the image, add a little bit more reds, made it a little bit brighter, added a little bit of noise. I do usually add a tiny little bit of noise just to make the image a little bit sharper. And then I dodged and burned the background as well as a little bit of exposure on her. I also added a little bit more color and contrast the image by adding a levels adjustment layer. And then I made it a little bit brighter. And then the last thing I did was liquefy the image to kind of just bring the hair together. And that's everything I did to edit this image. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long and I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, take care. Hope you guys are being safe.